So let's talk about Star Wars. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> let's spin my wheel of let's see sports, magic, Star Wars. <laughs> A let's daily see what, double. Let's see what we land on next. <laughs> no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Yeah. <laughs> so I came home from church tonight. I, I, I went to church. Actually, literally the church building for the first time since all this got started because I uh, the minister needed to talk to me about something. And it's nothing like super important, but he actually wanted me to part be a part of the service. He records every week and then people can download it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, sure, I'll come in. And I come home and Samantha is, so I think I've told you guys that we got risk for Christmas and the way that the two player version works is because you really need to have three or more players mm -hmm. is you kind of set up, you divide the, the cards uh, for each of the countries into three piles and then you take one your opponent takes one and then the third one you just put soldiers on it for a third party and they can't attack or get more soldiers but that way it's it's divided up correctly they're, they're the neutral group you got it and to win the game you don't need to wipe out the neutral you only need to wipe out the other player and samantha wasn't even sure she would like this game she's like you know well i'll i was like will you try it? and she's like yeah i'll try it I'm like, okay she got so into it, and she was doing so well, and she had some really good um, draws and, and really good – not draws because we're not talking about cards. Uh, some really good um, rolls that she got off to a great start. She started winning, and she decided that, hey, instead of just you know beating Daddy, I'm going to wipe out everything on the board and take over the world. And I'm like, this is not an alarming trend at all. Uh Carrie has always said that she didn't really have a strong urge to play. So it was interesting that when I came back, they had already finished dinner and all that. And Samantha has, Carrie's on the couch. Samantha has set up on the floor a uh, the, the risk board, and she's setting up soldiers. I'm like, are you playing? Because Carrie's up there. You're down on the floor. Carrie's not going to want to get down on the floor to play. Why are you not at the table? And she said, oh, no, I'm just showing her how to play. So she's running Carrie through a tutorial. <laughs> and it was kind of adorable. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thought you guys would like that. I can, And I can see it, too. That's the scary yeah. part. Yeah. I we don't have risk at the house. I have really wanted to go buy it because I that was one of those fond memories I have with my family. Um, this was god, I think it was back in either high school or middle school. We had the big blizzard that came through and it knocked out the power to our house for about, about a week, and so we were getting to the point where it was okay. We need to do something to, so so everyone can stay sane. And Dad yeah, you think quarantine now is bad? Yeah. <laughs> you know, a case of no, you literally cannot go to work because if you did, you would have been all you would have been in a ditch, and hope that the cops found you to t bring you back home. But dark. Um, <laughs> what? I'm with I you, didn't man. Mean, like you Just... know, like your body. I meant like you bring you back home. Be like, hey. Don't go out on the road. We'll send a tow truck to kind of bring, take take your car somewhere, kind of take you home. I didn't mean to go dark like that, but anyway, back up, back kind on, of escalated quickly. Back it's cool, on target. Man. Keep going. Keep, keep going. <laughs> Stay on target. Um, no, no more Star Wars. So, but uh, Dad had broken out uh, Risk, and we played a game, and Dad, my Dad, just cleaned the the floor with my brother and I because we were. We were playing and doing our thing, but Dad started off with Australia, because you could because we played it so that you could just put pieces where you wanted them to be instead of passing out the cards and putting them randomly. Right. Mm -hmm. You and can he, do it either. You snapped, can do it either way. So yeah, he snapped up Australia, and he he just stuck all his pieces in Australia, and I'm and my brother and I are going, oh, he's got all these places undefended, and so we ended up beating each other up. 
for a good part of it with occasionally, you know, like, well, dad's got all this stuff in this one spot. We're not going to attack that country. And then sure enough, he just starts, you know, cleaning, cleaning house. And we're, and we're now having to fight him We're we've come to a truce. Like I won't attack you if you want to attack me because dad's killing us. And he took the whole board. Like he had every country <laughs> there against us. And it, that was the first time I ever saw the strategy, strategy of, you always take Australia. If you get the option, you always take Australia because you don't get a lot of pieces, but you, it's, it's very defensible. Yeah. That, those bon those bonus armies add up. Yeah, oh, they yeah. do. Australia is pretty good. And so that's, that was the one thing that I learned. And, and yeah, you know, we, God, we played that for probably about four hours so it was just a fun thing and and again that's a very fond memory i have of of my dad and my brother is us playing risk and even whenever i was uh in creedmoor we played lord of the rings risk and it was uh one of my coworkers and one of the students and you know it, the map was so different i'm trying to look and it's like where is australia on this thing i was just and, about to ask if there was a middle earth equivalent of australia i didn't really see it but there were places where you couldn't go you couldn't attack through mountains so mountains were sort of like uh ocean tiles oh okay and so you could only like if you had one you couldn't go around the mountains to get to the tiles so you could defend ones on different sides uh so you had to defend like you know the the flanks but you didn't really have to defend up the middle uh, all the time, but again, that was that was a lot of fun too. We never finished the game because the day was over and we were kicking. We were still on a the. It was a makeup day schedule, and it was time to send people to the next class, and so we never really finished it. But it was a lot of fun. I used to it might have been Mordor. I, I, that might have been it. I used to play Risk with Scott and uh, Lex and Angela. Lex and Angela would eventually get bored and sort of stop paying attention, and it would end up being basically just me and Scott. But, like, I always enjoyed it, but it was such a pain in the ass to, like, logistically do. Mm -hmm. you, so, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. We got, Set up and fiddling with all the pieces and everything. Yeah, and then we got Risk Factions on the Xbox 360. And so Scott and I took great pleasure in playing digital risk which was a lot less hassle digital so, risk is uh, the total war series n no that's that's a video game i mean it's like risk no. but just digital like straight up there were occasionally like you could enable or disable like special digital only powers or something i can't remember now but for the most part it was possible to just play normal old boring ass risk and we loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so my family thought it was really interesting that I was asking for risk for Christmas. So that's when we got it because it kind of has a, a sordid history with my family. We took it on a couple trips to the beach, you know, like you do. And, um, it, it became the, uh, it became the thing to do, right? We never finished a game. We stalled out every time. Do you want to know why? Because we misread the rule that says you can attack more than once in a single oh turn. My God. So oh we thought, Lord. oh my gosh. So gosh. we were like, how does anyone ever win this game? It must be impossible. It's not impossible. You just, you know, attack more than once. But we didn't know. We misread the rule. We didn't know you could do that. So, yeah. We yeah, would inevitably, <laughs> inevitably build up to a, st a stalemate and just no one would ever win. So, it, I think it was in college playing with somebody that they're like, no, you can totally play more than, uh, attack more than once. It's like, oh. And I then really we looked at the it. rules and was like, oh, yeah, it does say you can in the rules. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I started doing that, and I'm like, you know, 
that seems pretty cool. Maybe we should do that. Yeah, the first, the first several games my brother and I played with each other, we didn't read the rules quite right, and instead of, you know, the loser of each battle losing, one unit, the losses that we were playing with were equal to the difference <laughs> in the rolls. <laughs> so there were some swingy battles. I believe it. <laughs> in the first few games we played. I've never been a big fan of board games. I don't know why. Yeah, you told me that after we bought you that Nintendo Monopoly. Yeah. And you're like, I really love this. This is really sweet. I don't play board games. And I'm like, since when? And then I'm like, oh, you know, it's never really come up before. <laughs> so The the only board game that uh, Chewie ever really played along with us was Magic. And that one, again, doesn't come with yeah, that's, that's not pre-assembled stuff. It's just, you know, you have to bring your own. I oh, guess may, stuff for that game. I guess maybe I'm just like okay, you know, he plays games, so yeah, yeah. That's still, I think, the only board game I actually own is that Nintendo Monopoly. Mm -hmm. Back in the day when I was a kid, I had one called an electronic board game called the Omega Virus. That was a lot of fun. I think I've seen that one on store shelves. Because you. Uh, like you would go to it had it had a little computerized thing in the middle and you would go to a room and you'd punch in a code and it would tell you what happened in the room and that was just cool as hell when you were however old I was at the time I remember did you ever play there was a game that also came with a VHS tape I mean there and, were a bunch of those and this was, those, yeah. this was one that like you're supposed to play at nighttime and um, it had the gatekeeper or crypt keeper or something, and you're supposed to collect keys, and as like the clock keeps ticking away toward midnight or whatever, and if it gets to midnight, then everybody loses or something like that. And but the whole thing was it was kind of kind of had like a a a a, 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 a like was a it called film. night nightmare? Yes. I just googled VHS game horror, and everything is about nightmare. So, oh yeah, the gatekeeper was what the dude was called. Whoa, that's terrifying. Uh, chat, hang on, let me let me show you what I'm looking at here. Of course, you can't. Uh, I didn't set Chrome up because I didn't think I'd be going over here. Let's see. Isn't that special? Do you remember the horror VHS board game Nightmare? And that's the first picture. I am the gatekeeper. Oh! <laughs> I, I think See, I... Bug. When I think of that, the mine always uh, think of terrible graphics and all that for a game was Night Trap. I never <laughs> played Night Trap. But that when I hear VHS, this my thought always goes to Night Trap. <laughs> Except Night Trap was not a VHS game. Oh, I know. It was, a, it was an early was Sega 3D CD game. Yeah. And I think there was a version on the 3DO, I want to say. Scott had it on the Sega CD. It was not fun. It w The only reason anyone remembers it is because uh, all of the weird uh, like 90s Republicans jumped on it as some sort of, this is what's wrong with the youth of today. Yeah, the and horrible it, murder simulator or whatever. It, yeah, <clears throat> and it was barely a game. It was awful. <laughs> What it had a great sound, a great song on it. I mean, it was called what? It was not called Night Trap. <laughs> yeah, the song was Night Trap. Yeah. But you couldn't even like watch them sing the song because at several points uh, during, during them the song, they were trying to get in the house. Yeah, you'd have to jump to a different camera and set off a trap to catch an auger, and then go back, and now you've missed part of it. And it's uh, mm -hmm. like I said, it's barely a game. It's awful. What's but it called again? At Night Trap. Night Trap. It became no notorious. It it is seriously, it is a game that is worth, potentially worth watching somebody else play or watch an online, watching somebody play it. Don't play it yourself unless you really are just a, a like you're a completionist kind of person or a person who just wants some nostalgia or just wants to know what's going on. It's easier just to watch somebody else do it. 
Yeah. Or just hack the game and watch the video files or something, because dear God. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and even that's pretty sad, pretty bad. Scott had like a uh, a notepad, like a notebook, and he had all the times in which room you were supposed to go to because he was determined to actually beat the damn game. I don't know if he ever did. I don't. I don't think he did while I was around. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he probably did at some point because after a while it just becomes boring. Like, mm-hmm. okay, it's 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 eight oh three and twenty seconds, so you got to go to this room and hit the button. Okay, and then you got to go to this room and hit the button, and then now you you got like 45 seconds to burn so you can go to the room where all the, the the people are running around doing stuff and then oh wait hang on gotta go to this room and hit the button and like that's it <laughs> the game's on switch now night trap is on switch now are you serious yeah. <laughs> they, it's the whatever any anniversary edition they decided to bring anniversary it back. edition for nintendo switch that is uh think uh, outside outside oxbox or an outside extra did a play of it and they laughed the whole time and the the laughing had more to do with the goofiness of the game oh yeah than it had to do with you know this game is great it was just oh my gosh this game is so terrible <laughs> Huh. That must have been before I started watching Outside Extra. Oh, it came out in 2018. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I had discovered them just yet. Buh. And people paid for this? I, yeah. man. <laughs> it's $15? It is not <laughs> worth $15, even for the, uh, this is so bad, the uh, value. I use that term loosely. <laughs> I know. Jesus. 